Okay, so welcome back to another Bitwig tutorial. And on this one, we are going to talk about the sample and hold modulator. Okay, so uh, let me just show you something because maybe you didn't, uh, you didn't know, you don't know what sample and hold is. Maybe you're starting and you don't know. So some synths uh, throughout history, uh, they can generate some random pattern and uh, they use sample and hold. So sample and hold, what it's going to do, do in pretty much uh, lame terms, is going to take a sample uh, from uh, from some sound, right? And that sound needs to be, uh, it could be an oscillator or it could be a noise generator. And it's going to take a tiny sample and it's going to do it after a certain pe period of time. And most of the times that period of time is going to be decided by the LFO. Okay, so I'm right here, I'm on the ARP Odyssey, you know, a classic synthesizer. And I'm uh, going to show you this right here because this is, uh, this one has a sample and hold, is how this one works. So I'm going to go and just solo this track. And I'm going to do some playing, okay? So this is the sound from the uh, ARP Odyssey. Very dull, right? And we are going to get this sound, one, then two, and then three, okay? So. What I want to do, I want to use this sample and hold just to get different pitch, to get a random pitch. And this is the control that's going to do this. Notice that it says SH. So as, as soon as I go up, we are starting to get a change, but it's not, you know, that aggressive. Okay. So behind the scenes, this is what it can do. It can output a noise. This is the noise. Now notice that the noise, it's pretty inconsistent. Inconsistent. So, you know, it has a lot of ups and downs because it's noise. Now, what the sample and hold is going to take a sample from this one. And since it's up and down, it's very inconsistent. That sample is going to be on different on different different spots. It's going to be on different places. So that's kind of a, the fundamental for random. Since it's going to be on different places, it's going to be random. Now, how fast this uh, snapshot, this tiny sample gets taken, it's going to be decided by, in this case, the in the case of, in case of the ARP Odyssey, by the LFO we have right here. So now I'm going to go and bring again the uh, oscillator. And I'm going to go and go up on this modulation, but we don't get something really crazy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring to the mixer that noise. So... And we're going to get that random. So what it's doing behind the scenes is just doing ap applying a random frequency, a random change on the, uh, on the pitch. And how fast this is going, notice this is the LFO. And that's the tempo. You notice that we, if you hear we can see that this is deciding. If I go faster... So the LFO is deciding, it's taking snapshot every single time, it ends the cycle, and then it's uh, the, the, the sample is going to be taken from the noise. Now, why all this is relevant, and it's because I'm gonna go right here, and this is the sound, remember? And I'm gonna bring the sample and hold. Now, this one works in a different way, in not the same way, but the principle is pretty much the same. We have an input, and then we have a sample rate, which is how fast. This is the LFO, how fast we're going to take each sample. Now, okay, I'm going to go right here, and right from the start, you're not going to get anything, anything at all. And for now, uh, the restart mode, we're going to talk about this in a second, is going to be free. Okay, so the whole idea of all of this is that we can get some kind of a modulation. So I'm going to go and say, this is the modulation, right? Just going to go to the filter and nothing happens. So this one is going to be deciding how fast uh, that sample is going to be taken, but the input is going to be deciding where it's going to be. So this is kind of a, our, our source, which is going to be the noise in the case of the our, our Odyssey. In the case of this one, we have nothing. So we need to move it. And notice if we move it, we are just moving uh, to a different place. And this one is going to change. Now, of course, if I start moving this manually, notice the instruction changes. And notice the filter. Just look at the filter right here while I'm moving this. Now, so this device, this actual mod, this modulator, what it, uh, how it works is that we need a way to move this input. So we need a different modulator. And it could be whatever you want. It doesn't matter. In this case, I'm maybe going to bring a beat LFO just because we can maybe control it a little bit better. So I'm going to go and say that I'm going to be using a sine wave, and I'm going to say that we are going to go and move this input. 
So now it's going to go up and down, up and down. And notice that now the shape of how, you know, this works, we get, a, we get something else, you know, we get something different. So if I play this and make sure that you have the uh, per voice disabled for now. So if I play this, we are getting this motion. Now, of course, this one is deciding where it needs to go. And this one is deciding how fast we take that snapshot. So if I go to something else, maybe a quarter note, this instruction is going to be much slower. Now, there's need that you need to have a, some kind of a disparity, you know, some change between the, how fast this is going and how fast this is going. Because right now, every time we play the keys, we are just kind of a starting right here. Nothing happens. So if I kind of unsync both, we are going to start to get something random. Now, of course, you can go and select different different values right here. It depends on how, how you're selecting. It depends on how random it's going to be or how fast you're going to be making these changes. If I go very slow, notice that the changes are going to be much slower. Okay. So I'm going to go to something faster. And I'm going to go to this one and make it bipolar. And now bipolar means, it means that it's going to go back and forward. Now if I unsync this, we're going to start getting more chaos because it's just much faster. Now notice that they are kind of a all, all square, uh, square kind of a shapes. So this one, what we can do, we can smooth those transitions. And now the transition is going to be a little bit smoother. Notice that we are just kind of uh, rounding the corners. And if we go too much, of course, everything is going to be super round. Now, of course, if we go much, you know, aggressive on this one, we're going to start get going up and down. And this is this one is going to go up and down by a lot. All right. So again, remember this control is really important to unsync whatever it is that you're doing right here if you're not getting a lot of changes. Okay. Now I'm gonna go and not make it bipolar because it's just gonna go too crazy. Just gonna do something like that. All right. Okay, so let me show you one more thing. We're gonna talk about the uh, restart mode. Now, of course, uh, this is kind of a working, uh, it's just taking those samples. Remember, it's like the LFO and it tells how, you know, it, how fast we take those samples. So it needs to be in sync. If it's not in sync, it's gonna, something is gonna happen. And if it's unsynced, it's, something else is gonna happen. You know, this is gonna work in a different way. So the restart mode is gonna take, well, it's gonna say to this one, uh, how to take the samples. If it's free mode, it means that whenever we start, uh, we start this mo modulator, uh, it's going to uh, pretty much never stop. It's going to start at some point and never change. It doesn't matter if we play or we stop or we play some MIDI notes. It doesn't matter. Just going to go and just do it. So sometimes we're just going to get kind of a weird sound because it's not in sync. And I'm, that's this is what I, I, I did behind the scenes. I'm just doing the same BDLFO, but I just did this manually so fine, so I can find something we can really hear. So my problem right now is that this sound is not in tempo, it's not very consistent. So if I go to gate mode, notice every time with a key, a new key plays, is a bit more in sync, right? It's a bit more in tempo, even though we are just doing it manually. And it's not really in sync. And this is because the gate mode, it means that every time we have a new single, a new MIDI note, an incoming signal in this case, it's going to restart and start over. Then we have the sync mode, and this one is a little bit different. This one is going to restart whatever it is that we are doing right here, but it's going to start whenever we do play. So as soon as we do play, every, uh, do, uh, do play, everything is going to be consistent. But as we move forward, since this one is not in sync, it's in hard and hurts since manually, it's going to get, uh, you know, unsynced. So I'm going to go and play it. Sync. And we start going on sync. Right. It doesn't matter we play new MIDI notes. It doesn't matter. So it's going to be listening for the play, for the transport. That's what it means. All right, so that's the difference between the restart modes. So uh, there's one more thing we can do with this, 
And this one, I guess it's not gonna cut it. So I'm gonna go in and remove it. And I'm gonna bring maybe a classic LFO or maybe, yeah, we have the classic LFO. Uh, what, what really, oh, I'm gonna bring this one, the, the LFO. So I've never used this one. Uh, I mean, I, I never use it on these tutorials, but you know, why not? I'm gonna use this one. So this one is just give me, give me an instruction of what, what, what it needs to do, you know, what's happening. So of course I'm gonna go right here and say, dude, we want to do something like this. So we're gonna start getting that randomness. Cool, so we know how this works now. So this is gonna go up and down, up and down. So if we play it, it's cool, right? All right, so we know how this works. Now what happens if I go and do maybe a sync? Maybe I'm gonna go and do a unison. And I'm gonna go and do a little bit of spread, random spread. Maybe it's too bright. Maybe that's not too bright. So I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna go a little bit of this. And we're gonna start getting, you know, some weird sounds. And that's cool. That's why we use this one. So I'm gonna go to gate mode. Cool. So now this one, what it can do, it can do per voice. So it means that every single key we play is gonna be listening uh, to that key and it's gonna run its own sample and hold to you know, whatever it is that we are doing right here. And uh, whenever we enable this, we can see it right here. We have three keys, then three, then three, and then three. So we get three dots, then three dots again. And this is uh, following whatever, you know, this instruction, right? Still following the same thing. And it's going up and down. And these are the three keys that we are playing. Now, right now, all the voices are doing the same thing. So we don't get a lot of change. And it's because the instruction, which is this one, it's listening to this LFO, that it's not a per voice. So if I go right here and make it poly, all the different voices are gonna be doing a different sample and hold, so we're gonna get start getting different movements. And we get a, just a different sound, so I'm gonna just make it a little bit more obvious. Really great, man. So it's a really cool sound. Now, of course, all of this is just, we are just playing with this. We are just getting random, a random value of this one. And this one, it's on free mode. But we can see, you know, the, the three different keys going on right here. So we can see what's gonna happen right here because this is the motion. Right. So of course, all of these devices, uh, these modulators, you need to do a little bit of experimentation with them, you know? Just go and just play around with them. Maybe I'm gonna do a little bit more. <laughs> so remember how the original sound was? This is the original sound. It's not super special, but this one is just a little bit weird. And maybe we can just turn this into something a bit more aggressive. And this is sound, kind of a sound effect. All right. So that's it, that's the sample on hold. So hopefully you learned something on this one. And remember to like and subscribe, uh, subscribe to YouTube on this channel. And remember to check Patreon, uh, because I upload uh, to Patreon everything uh, way before I do it right here on YouTube. So maybe you want a little bit of uh, early access so you're gonna get it on Patreon, and on top of that, you're gonna be uh, supporting the channel, all right? So, see you on the next one.